Am I the a-hole for not congratulating my sister-in-law on her planned pregnancy and telling her she's making a mistake instead? My brother works as a car rental agent and his salary is not livable at all. His wife is a stay-at-home mom for their four-year-old, so he's the sole provider. And he's been receiving a fixed sum from both my mom and other sister to keep things afloat. I also helped a few times when I could. Some time ago, my sister-in-law told me she wanted another child because she didn't want their son to be an only child and asked me what I think. I advised her against it and told her to either wait till my brother gets promoted or till she gets a job. I told her it would be realistically impossible to provide for another child when you're barely coasting by and that she was still young, 27-year-old. I also told my brother the same thing. About three weeks ago, my brother calls me all happy and tells me his wife is pregnant. I told him, great, I wish you good luck, and soon hang up. I never called sister-in-law to congratulate her, nor went over to their place for the baby shower, just told them I was busy. Yesterday, we had dinner at our parents' house and I inevitably met my sister-in-law. She told me, you know, I'm pregnant, with an excited tone. I told her, yeah, I know, that's great, I wish you good luck. She then said, so, that's it? I asked her what she meant and she said, Aren't you happy for us? I told her my feelings are irrelevant here and their decision is up to them. She told me of course they matter and begged me to please honestly tell her what I think. So, I told her I frankly think you're making a mistake and this innocent child is going to suffer the consequences of your selfishness. You are not ready to care for another little life when you can't even pay your bills. How long do you think my mom and sister are gonna support you? She interrupted me and said, what the hell? That's none of your freaking business. I only ask you out of politeness, but you really didn't hold back at all. I told her, you're the one who told me to be honest. She said, I told you to be honest with me, not be a douche. She then called me an a-hole and went off to complain to my brother. I didn't want to entangle with them and just grabbed my purse and left. Sometime later, my mom calls me fuming and tells me I had no right to make any comment whatsoever. She said I should have congratulated them properly and left it at that. That, even if she was the one who asked for my opinion, I should have known better than to hurt her with those words. I also think my words might have been pretty hurtful and it went too far. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. This might be unpopular later, but not the a-hole. Maybe you should have been kinder or phrased it better. I don't know, because I don't know what you said. But she shouldn't be sheltered from the truth when she literally asked for it. We can go through life expecting family to cater to our feelings, but then their advice and opinions really mean nothing. Who wants to surround themselves with yes men saying whatever they want to hear? Personally, I value my dad's opinion more than others because I know he will be honest and call me out. She asked for your opinion? Got mad when you gave it. Full stop. You are not the a-hole. Not only ask, but had previously heard OP's opinion slash advice, then sought OP out and pressed the issue as if to get validation for herself. What was she expecting here? Not the a-hole. You would have been if you had mentioned it when you first got a call giving you the news. But you didn't until she cornered you and told you to be honest. So you were. That's what I found interesting too. That she already knew Opie's opinion, yet pushed her to give it again. It's like she either wanted to start drama or she was delusional in hoping that Opie had changed her mind, even though none of their circumstances had changed. Not the a-hole. I never understand people who does not have enough money even for one person, and then they marry and make two plus kids and they have no money. Some people lose their rational thinking capability when a topic comes to kids. If you cannot live with one wage with three people and you get support from the family, you cannot live with four people. Not the a-hole. Don't give them money anymore, even if you can't afford to do so. Yes, this exactly. Yeah. Or at least don't give until brother picks up his second job and is looking to improve his lot and sister-in-law. And make it clear that all help will end if they have another kid. They need to feel the consequences of their choices before help can be considered, so they won't be tempted to do it again. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister nobody was interested in her PhD research? My sister, 34 female, and I, 31 female, come from a working-class family. Nobody in our family is higher than a high school education, save for us. I have a bachelor's and my sister is currently working on her PhD. Obviously, we're both proud of this, but my sister often brags to an extent that many in our family find uncomfortable or discouraging, and she talks down to people around her. 
When she began her program, she explained it in very technical terms that confused our aunt. When she was asked to clarify, my sister made a fuss about how it was so easy for her to understand, and she forgets that not everyone can wrap their heads around it. It's been an issue since she started her master's, and I've admittedly been at my wits end with her for quite a while. I hosted Thanksgiving this year. When we were eating, my sister was asked about her research, and she went on a long, complicated spill about her work. She was missing context, pulling out every 10-cent word, getting super technical and under-explaining every concept. She talked for about 10 minutes straight, barely pausing for questions or comments. It dominated conversation. Eventually, I interrupted her and tried asking our dad about his work. My sister interrupted him and said she wasn't finished, then continued talking. I told her I was finished listening to her and that she could talk all she wanted but she'd need to do it in another room. She made some comments about my hosting and continued on. I stopped her again and told her that nobody was interested and she needed to be quiet, which she did. It was, admittedly, extremely awkward and quiet, and my husband decided to just plow on and make conversation with an aunt of mine. After that, conversation carried on as usual with my sister being very, very quiet. Afterwards, our parents scolded me for being rude but said my sister was being over the top but I should have just let her talk. A few of our other relatives thanked me for cutting her off. Her fiancé called me yesterday morning and said I embarrassed my sister and made her feel ashamed. He implied I was jealous of her success and asked me to formally apologize to her. I said I'd apologize to her, but I wouldn't mean it, and he hung up on me. I've thought it over and I can see how my approach was wrong, but I generally did not see any other option at a time. Always willing to learn though and seeking a new perspective. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister nobody was interested in her PhD research? Everyone sucks here. Your sister needs to know how to explain her doctoral work to a lay audience, if she has any hope of passing her dissertation committee. She also needs to learn how to craft an elevator sentence. She also needs to learn how to take a hint gracefully. You, on the other hand, need to stop being jealous of her success. Conscious of it or not, jealousy and resentment oozes out of this entire post. Regardless of how long she droned on and how rude it was for her to stop you from talking with your dad, the general core of this post isn't really centered on that, but your overall worldview on her academic career. Also, I hope the sister continued to brag about her PhD research, so other girls know that they can also get a PhD. Females should not be shy about their achievements. My problem is that she has never been this supportive of my achievements. She tells me constantly we aren't on the same level. It assures me it's okay, but makes backhanded remarks about my intelligence and level of education. I think it's great she's getting a PhD and I'm glad she's proud of it, but that pride doesn't need to be at everyone else's expense in my opinion. Then you need to correct her. She's your sister. Should be easy to say, what you just said is insulting and hurts my feelings. Please learn to be more tactful. I'm an especially frank person. My sister dyed her hair red one time and asked me how it looks. And I said I don't like the red, and it makes her look like the Wendy's girl. And she responded with, I am looking for compliments, and not criticism to make me feel bad. Now I know to lie and say, it's not bad, if I hate it. Next story. Am I the a-hole for calling every morning? My son is a 20-month-old toddler. My wife is a stay-at-home mom. I work six days a week, and I'm usually gone for 12 hours a day. I always check in on my son remotely via our nursery cam app and is always awake in the morning around 8. He has a great sleep routine. Our wind-down time starts at the same time every evening. We clean up toys, read a book. When I lay him down, he's still awake. He falls asleep on his own and sleeps all night for at least 12 hours. It's usually after 9 before I have a chance to check the camera. This morning, when I checked, it was 9.12 and the mornings are closer to 10. Every time I look, though, he's always in the dark and standing in his crib just waiting. When I see this, I immediately turn on the brightest night light the camera has and speak to him through the camera app. I always tell him good morning and I love him, and he usually laughs and says dada. Then, I leave the app, call my wife to wake her up. I usually have to call three to four times and when she finally answers, it's obvious that she just woke up. And only because I called. I tell her that our son is awake waiting for her and that she needs to get up to start their day. This morning while on the phone, I asked her if she was going to get him after using the bathroom, and she said no. She was going to the kitchen to prepare their breakfast and then she'd get him. 
I asked her to get him after the bathroom so he could go to the kitchen with her, and she flipped out. She told me it angers her that I call every morning to tell her how to be a mom and that she has a routine. I retorted with, well, your routine sucks because he's been awake for an hour and you'd still be asleep if I hadn't called. It just bothers me that he has to wait so long. He needs a diaper change, he's probably thirsty, hungry, and just wants to play. Am I wrong though? Do I need to stop? Please be completely honest with your answers. Thanks. Now for the top comments. You're the a-hall. I cannot imagine being a micromanaged mom like that, remotely. Wow. Is your son crying? No? Then it's fine. If he's uncomfortable, he will call for his mom. The kid is not going to cry if it's been normalized that he needs to wait in his crib for one to two hours. Not the a-hall. Totally agree with this. One to two hour wait is just sad. I hated reading this post. Your wife is a negligent mother. It is sad. Not the a-hole. She sounds lazy. Or like she has postpartum. You're the a-hole. Firstly, let's start with the fact that your kid is now into toddler range as opposed to infant. Your kid can manage a few moments alone in their crib and will still cry if they need any worthwhile attention. Secondly, let's say she took the toddler with her while preparing the food. Your kid is now learning escape methods, getting into crap, cosmos chief stage. Let her get the food ready first. Thirdly, best intentions aside, if my husband was micromanaging my mothering, I'd blow a gasket from stress alone. Mom's need with sanity remains to us, especially before entertaining a toddler for hours. Fourthly, there was zero indication of why you thought your son was up for an hour, which makes me think it wasn't necessarily true so much as you just wanted to add spice to the insult you slung at your wife. You chose her to be the mother of your child, now let her do her job in peace. He clearly states that his son usually is awake by 8, and mom doesn't come get him until past 9, sometimes as late as 10. That's not a few moments. Last story. Am I the a-hole for storming out of my wedding reception after a sister-in-law's speech? I, 26 male, got married to my wife, 32 female, this weekend. The ceremony went great and the reception was going well. Just after we ate, my father-in-law and best man spoke, then my sister-in-law. All was going smoothly until she brought up an awful time in my life. A little background. During COVID, I lost most of my savings on the business I had unluckily opened in October of 2019. I was also dealing with bad gastrointestinal problems and horrible IBS. I felt horrible, like I had no hope, and getting my life back in order would take forever. Friends who had been a part of my business left due to the failure, and others due to the medical problems. My fiancé was the only one who supported me and gave me hope. She helped me rebuild my self-esteem and eventually my business, and I cannot thank her enough. When I was at my lowest, I wrote an emotional note about these feelings and went into detail about all the horrible things I felt both emotionally and physically. I also wrote about how she was my strength and kept me afloat. I told my wife about writing my thoughts but never showed her the note. Midway through sister-in-law's speech, I saw her unfold this dreaded note and start to read it to the audience. Not just the part about my wife, but a full paragraph before it, where I described how hopeless I felt and the details of my darkest moments from my toughest battles with IBS. I was so embarrassed. My sister-in-law started to cry as she got through the part about my wife, and went on to say she never knew how bad it was, but knew our love would overcome anything. I got red in the face stormed out to the back of the venue and lit up a cigarette, which I haven't had in years. Some family members ran out, but I told them I needed to be alone. I came back after a bit. Everyone was eating and dancing, but I was still getting stares and I just felt horrible. My wife comforted me, but we didn't really talk it through since she was entertaining family and whatnot. After the party, I brought it up with my sister-in-law. I told her I felt violated that she would somehow get a hold of that note and not only read it, but share it with everyone. I said it hurt because the memory of the wedding certainly felt tainted by the speech and my reaction. She told me she wanted to share a beautiful image of our love. I didn't see anything wrong with it. That it reminded her of when her smoothie business failed and it gave her hope. She even told me it was a toxic coping mechanism to repress those feelings and be ashamed of them. I felt like the conversation was going nowhere and we didn't speak for the rest of the night. It hasn't helped that distant family and friends have been recommending IBS treatments to me. My wife agrees with me, but thanks sister-in-law had good intentions. 
I told her she's an a-hole regardless for not even checking with me. Sister-in-law hasn't reached out to apologize yet. And I heard from mother-in-law she thinks I'm overreacting and trying to villainize her. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I am trying to respond to each one as soon as I can. Just want to say here that my wife did not know where the note was. I never even told her specifically about the note, just that I like to journal my thoughts and feelings. Info. Why are you not more concerned with where sister-in-law would have gotten the note, if not from your wife? Who else even knew about it? This. Sounds like the wife was in on it, which is why she's going on about sister-in-law's good intentions. Sorry about the late response. I replied to another comment earlier, but it may have moved to the bottom. My wife did not know the note existed, only that I journaled my thoughts during those dark times. I do have a theory though. Too much info warning. My IBS usually fluctuated a lot. During the times of constipation, I found that nicotine and coffee made me go. Weird, I know, but whatever works. As I tried to quit cigarettes, I started smoking more THC hemp slash weed. We live in a legal state with some tobacco mixed in to help with vowel movement. I used to journal when I smoked and usually kept my notes in my little wee bag. I had a sneaking suspicion sister-in-law's a smoker too, but maybe she found a bag. I haven't touched the bag since I got a new e-cigarette electronic THC pen last year, so I wouldn't have noticed anything missing. I'm sure the note could have fallen out too since we reorganized our house this summer and a lot of things got mixed up. Just a theory. Okay, so not only did your sister-in-law publicly humiliate you at your own wedding, but it's very likely she roots through your private possessions and straight up just steals things from you. There's a lot of boundaries being violated here. She clearly doesn't respect you, your privacy, your property, or your consent. She's unquestionably in the wrong, and you probably shouldn't let her in your house or have access to anything else you own.